Welcome to episode three of Let's Talk, a podcast for women from the Gospel Coalition Podcast Network, where we seek to apply biblical wisdom to everyday life. I'm Jackie Hill Perry, and I am here with the Jasmine Holmes and the <laughs> Melissa Kruger. So far, we've talked about work and boundaries. And Melissa, tell us what we'll be talking about today. So today is kind of a hard topic, personal topic. Mm-hmm. We tend to do those a lot. We yeah, do. I know we do. And these were some, this was one of the ones that our listeners said in. Um, what do we do when others fall away? Or what does it even mean? Maybe, what are we even talking about when we talk about our friends who have, we thought we're walking with the Lord. So that's different from people who just don't know the Lord. But people in our lives that we thought were walking with the Lord, mm-hmm. and then they either walk away altogether, or maybe their actions they walk away from God, it seems, through how they're living or whatever. Um, have y'all experienced that in your lives? It feels like it's a very yeah. common thing right now. Yeah, it, it does feel really common right now. And um, not in the sense, I want to be careful how I say that, because I don't want to downplay the fact that people really are struggling with the faith mm-hmm. and really mm-hmm. are moving away, walking away. I don't want to make it sound like, oh, it's common right now. Like, oh, it's so trendy. Yeah. Yeah. But I do think that... Um, Part of it is just where we are right now with uh, the pandemic and the isolation that we've been feeling. I I think that that has a lot to do with with some of the amount of it that's happening right now. Um, This is a hard season Mm -hmm. for a lot of people. Um, And it feels like walking away is one of the reactions that's happening. Yeah. Yeah. Why do you think the pandemic exposed it? Yeah, I think it's 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 loneliness and and being separated from uh, believers. Uh, it's a part of it. Uh, in Hebrews three thirteen, it says, uh, "But exhort one another every day, as long as it is today, that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness mm. of sin." Mm. And that's heavy to mm-hmm. to say that me being apart from those who could exhort me and challenge me. Uh, and encourage me in the faith that that somehow leaves room for sin to deceive me. And so I think that's a huge part of it. It's just uh, us being separated from one another. But I don't think that that's ultimately to blame. Right. Mm. You know, because you have John on the island of Patmos. You have yeah. you have all kinds of instances yeah. in the scriptures mm-hmm. where people did go in through prison. seasons of isolation, yeah. right. but they still remained in the faith. So maybe so. it revealed what was already there. For sure. What was already kind of um, easier to hide. So many times I think in my life, as because I've been a Christian for most of my life, I have felt like I was faking. Hmm. Like hmm. everybody else was okay and everybody else was seemed like they weren't doubting and seemed like they were fine and so i felt pressure to continue to act like everything was okay and act like everything was fine and eventually i broke down and someone was there Mm -hmm. um but if i had broken down and nobody had been there i don't know what would have happened because Mm -hmm. that's such a burden to carry to just Mm -hmm. continuously be faking that you're okay because you're in community and you want the people that are around you to think that you're okay. That's why one part of me, I I was sharing this with Preston recently. One part of me appreciates when people come out and publicly say, I am, I'm not a Christian or I'm deconstructing my faith because it's honest. Mm -hmm. You know, you have a lot of people who are out here who feel the same way, yeah. but they continue to pastor yeah. or continue to minister or continue to, you know, do all the Christian things when their hearts are really far from God. And so part of me feels like that's a better place to be is in a place of honesty where now your friends can deal with you as you really are yeah. than a place of like deceit and hiddenness. Yeah. Cause it, it does seem like we've almost attached shame to doubt. So how can the church be a better receiver of people who just are doubting? Yeah, it feels like sometimes people feel like they have to go outside the church community Mm -hmm. to get answers to their doubt. Or maybe that's how they try to deal with it. I I always try to even tell my kids and it's okay to have doubts. Mm -hmm. You know, I I mean, I think it's normal, like, because there is this thing that you're putting faith Mm -hmm. in what you can't see. I mean, so you know, we're all, we're all living our lives for something that's not yet realized. Mm -hmm. And so I think doubt makes sense, but it seemed like you've even felt like you've had to hide it 
and that there's this sense of I can't tell other people I'm struggling with doubt and then by the time it's gotten so far gone right it's almost too late so how can the church be a welcoming place for doubters or questioners or ask you know mm. people who are asking part of it I think is I so I grew up in uh, my dad is an apologist so I grew up around apologetics <laughs> Everything was be prepared to give an answer. And so part of the struggle that I find with people who fall away from the faith is that we want to give the same canned answers that we would give to somebody who's just starting to explore the faith. And they've already heard. They've heard all that already. They've watched the videos. They've gone through the courses. They've heard the sermons. They've, and so I think going back to just the power of the spirit in our conversations with people, as opposed to just giving canned answers because the canned answers are usually what led that person Mm -hmm. to this place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think, I think what's interesting now, what you were just saying reminded me actually of a blog post my husband wrote and he said, what's missing from a lot of sermons is persuasion Not to the non-Christian, but to the believer. Mm -hmm. Like we have forgotten that every Sunday, you and I need to be re-persuaded that what we believe is true again. Because we're frail. That's why we we need not to go too long meeting together so that we can hear reminders of, no, no, this is really true and this is really good news. And, but... But that even if, if people preaching or whether we're teaching or whatever could remember, it's not just the non-Christian who needs to be persuaded of the truths of Christianity, but the Christian does. Yeah. Not just so that they can go share with someone else, but for their own soul and right. well-being. And I think we forget that. Yeah, most of the New Testament is that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. Yeah, because Paul's writing letters to believers yeah. to remind them. And Jude, he, he he says uh, toward the end of his letter, have mercy hmm. on those who doubt, meaning have compassion hmm. on those who doubt. That's kind of not what we think we should do. We, no. we say, you know, rebuke those who doubt or challenge those who doubt. And that is compassionate, yeah. depending on if wisdom calls for it in that moment. You know, but I think there has to be a kind of empathy that says, you know what? I struggle believing that God is good and real and true. To, that everything I'm doing in this earth, submitting my body as a living sacrifice, that that's actually just, that's not in vain. Like mm-hmm. there is a crown laid up for me yeah. somewhere, yeah. you know? So. Mm. Where do we see cases of this in the Bible? Like, is this a surprise? It's everywhere. I mean, Israel. Yeah. <laughs> over and over again in Israel. I get so frustrated with Israel, and then I'm like, it's you. Totally you. Mm-hmm. It's you. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. you are literally okay. sitting there like, he just part of the Red Sea, mm-hmm. and you're just going to doubt him? And it's like, what did he do for you that you're now doubting him? Yeah. yeah. Um, Israel's the best the best example ever. Yeah. Um, and I think, wait, even when we get to the New Testament, you've got Judas. Mm-hmm. I mean, when I think about it, he walked with Jesus for three years. He He, when the 72 were sent out, he was one of them. Mm-hmm. You know, healing and I'm assuming doing miracles or how, somehow he was. He looked like a legit disciple. Yes, yeah, he definitely so did. much so that when Jesus said, one of you is going to, you know, deny me. They're all like, is it I, Lord? I, yeah, it's not like they were like, well, we know it's Judas. <laughs> yes. Gotta be Judas. It, you know, and, and sometimes I think pridefully, oh, I'd recognize. I know who it's going to be. Like that person. And, and there are signs like we all can see. But I think. I think the hardest people are people that we didn't see coming. And yes. sometimes that can um, really shake us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I mean, we had a friend who was in our house all the time and just a few years ago walked away from the faith. I mean, this is a person in our life. You know, I sat under Bible studies from this person. You know, I was in small group with this person. And they just decided they didn't want to do this anymore. Yeah. Um, and it's tough. I mean, and I felt, I felt a little bit like, what did I miss? What did I miss? And so I feel better when I read that all 11 disciples missed Judas yeah. too. You know, like it wasn't like, 
it's not always obvious. It's not always the person you think it's going to mm-hmm. be. Yeah. But then there's the person like Peter who you might have expected <laughs> to fall away forever. Yeah. You know, yeah. but Jesus comes and says, you know, uh, Satan has, you know, come to me that he might sift you like we, but I have prayed for you yeah. that your faith would not fail. Yeah. And um, that's been a bomb as people have been falling away from the faith around me mm-hmm. where it's like, man, I need to be praying that their faith might be failing now. Yeah. But I need to pray that it would not fail forever. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. that even if they're going through the season now where there's a legit failure to trust and believe and hold on to faith that if they're 60, 70, 80, 90, that they'll believe again. Yeah. yeah. And God is faithful. Is it? Yeah. It's important to remember that these stories are not over. Hmm. Um, cause I think that they can cause us to doubt, mm-hmm. right? Like you hear the story of somebody who was a faithful teacher of the word falling away and you're like, okay, what does that mean for me? What does that mean for, but God knows what the end of the story is. We don't even know yet. Like we're just at one part of it. Yeah. Um, and I have to remind myself of that. Otherwise I kind of get into cycles of like, okay, okay. So when am I going to fall away? Like, when, 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 when am I going to fall away? Like, yeah. how is it going to look when I do? There's also, um, I think, a spectrum of doubt, right? So Judas doubted to the point of betraying Jesus. Mm-hmm. Thomas doubted to the point of just embarrassing himself. But I think that, like, I think some people, you know, f- fall away for a short season. Some people fall away for a longer season. It's just, it's such yeah. a, yeah, we don't know how it ends. Yeah. Have you had friends who fell away for a season and came back not yet i not know yet. i was trying i was just thinking about that i haven't had many yeah not yet yeah yeah it's hard from i come from a very um a super conservative background mm-hmm. and so when my friends run away from christianity they run hard mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like yeah they run hard yeah so it's just and i've seen some more what i will say i've seen come back are teenagers who rebelled Mm -hmm. like you know all through their teen years is in college and then now as adults i've seen them come back that i've seen more of but as adults who have walked away Mm -hmm. it's it's been hard Mm -hmm. i mean i still pray there's still friends i continue to pray for that the lord would bring them back but and i bet there's more reasons to that than just you know plain old rebellion mm-hmm. i think there's a, a level of shame too mm-hmm. yeah it's, yes you know yeah. if if the lord does begin to soften their heart and they start to see man the world isn't as sa- satisfying as i believed it would be or yeah. you know the doctrine that i had been ingesting by scoffers was actually lies but will the church accept me yeah if yeah. i come back yeah. you know will they be there with open arms and i, I think that's why we have to constantly be a refuge mm-hmm. for people in those seasons yep so that when they do return they know who to go to mm-hmm. and they feel safe in saying hey i'm 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 back can you help me yeah, yeah. you know yeah which and we, that i'm not a lost cause mm-hmm. yeah that not just like back. cutting people off because their doubt makes us uncomfortable right? yeah um jackie talk more about that like the world the lure of the world the passion Mm -hmm. element there yeah it's a thing because i think it's it's we're prone to believe that it's just uh people have somehow that they're attracted to like theological error Mm -hmm. that it's just that Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it's like even in timothy it says that they will accumulate teachers that suit their passions And Paul says that there are passions that wage war Mm. against our souls. It's that, you know, the the teaching that appeals is the teaching that connects with what they believe in their heart or what they want, you know? So whether that's worldliness and all that that entails. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, uh, the lust of the eyes, all those things. It's, you know... of course I'm going to ascribe to a progressive sexual ethic if I don't want to give my body to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Of course I'm going to say that, you know, uh, God isn't real perhaps if I would like to be the Lord and the God of my life, right? Like the, those types of doctrines make sense when you want to be the ruler of your own Mm -hmm. kingdom. And so I think that's why even in our 
are uh, walking with certain friends, it's not just having the right argumentation to keep them in the faith. Doctrine matters, but we also need to address the idols that exist in their Mm -hmm. hearts that makes these idols attractive or these these Mm -hmm. types of doctrines attractive. But I think it's also like community is huge, man. Like one of the things I've consistently seen with people that fall away, it isn't just doctrine. It isn't just passions, but also their community, their friendships. Uh, In Psalms 1, it talks about blessed are those who don't sit in the seat of scoffers. Mm -hmm. And I've seen where when you get in a group of people that are always scoffing at the Bible Mm. and the Christians and the church, or if you are obsessed with all the TikTok videos that come out that always have something to say about the faith, that does something to your heart, Mm -hmm. you know, because it stirs up. Or it just allows your unbelief to seem rational. Yeah, it it lets it fester. Yeah. I I have found, um, because, you know, I'm 31 years old, but I'm still on TikTok. (laughs) Yes. You know. My mother's 65 and she's there every day. Well, that makes me feel better. Yeah. That does. She loves it. Um, I'm like... (laughs) I, I always I would tell my kids at school, I'd be like, yeah, I was watching this video. And they're like, where? And I'd be like, you know, it was, it was video program. It was a video that I was watching. Oh, that someplace. Like um, you wouldn't know it. You wouldn't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but sometimes, you know, I'll be scrolling. And because algorithms are really smart, you know, they give me the content that I'm looking for. There's a lot of cooking content, a lot of cute baby content, all sweet stuff that I'm, you know, interested yeah. in that I, that I want to know more about. And sometimes I'll scroll and it'll be like a video that's discrediting um, or mm-hmm. seeking to discredit a biblical truth. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I'm in a place where I watch them and think through them. But honestly, sometimes I'm, a, I'm in a place where I don't mm-hmm. because I'm like, I'm not in the place to listen to scoffers right now. Mm-hmm. That's just not where I'm at. Mm-hmm. I know that my flesh is weak at this moment. Yeah. And so I'm going to keep on scrolling. It's called guarding your heart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and being aware, what 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 is like? I could be the one who falls away. Like I don't. I mean, I think the scriptures give warnings mm-hmm. for a good reason. You know, consider your ways, think about these things. Yeah, I mean, there there is this warning all through Hebrews: don't fall away. Let me right. tell you why. Jesus is better. Jesus is better than Moses. He's better than the angels. You know, he's better than the law. He's better, and I think. We have to even be as friends saying that to one another. Yeah. This is better, but the world's tempting. It is. I mean, it's coming at us. Yes. The the parable of the sower is really interesting. That's one of my favorites. Go back and read it. And because it says here, there there were four different options. When they hear the word of the kingdom and they don't understand it, the evil one may come and snatch away what's been sown that's what was sown along the path as for the one that's sown on rocky ground this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy yet has no root he endures for a while but when tribulation or persecution arises Mm -hmm. on account of the word he immediately falls away so there's that as one reason then the person who is sown among the thorns that's the one who hears the word but the cares of the world and deceitful niches deceitfulness of riches choke the word and it proves unfruitful and then you have the good soil the one who hears the word and understands it he bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold in another 60 and another 30 and yeah it's like the scripture jesus was preparing them yeah Yeah. the word's gonna go out and some are gonna look like yeah they're there Mm -hmm. but i thought it was really interesting that it was persecution which i've seen Cares of the world and deceitfulness of riches. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. You know, have y'all seen those three types? I yes. wouldn't even say riches in term terms of money, but just prosperity and ease. Yeah. Yes. That yeah. comes with it. Yes. You know, I, right. I just want to be comfortable in my life. Yeah. And the Christian faith calls me to a level of discomfort that I'm unwilling to embrace. Yeah. 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 Um, and I do think sometimes. I, as I'm, I'm just kind of like mulling over the aspect of guarding our hearts. And I want to be really careful to say that what we're not saying is that you can't ask questions, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. What we're not saying is that you shouldn't be ready with an answer because the Bible literally tells us to be ready with an answer. <laughs> but there's a difference between a question that has come up in your own life, in your own heart, mm-hmm. and a question that you're allowing to be sown there mm-hmm. by a scoffer mm-hmm. and by somebody whose intention is to draw you 
away. Um, Cause we, we come up with enough questions on our own. Oh yeah. You know, without surrounding ourselves with people who are constantly just fueling, pulling and yeah. picking and fueling. And, yes. Yeah. Well, I think there's a question of faith that says, God, I don't understand. I don't understand why you sent the Israelites in and they killed all the Canaanites. Like, I think that's fair. Mm-hmm. I mean, you look at scripture and it's mm-hmm. pretty bloody. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, it, it, but there's a way to ask that in faith. Like I'm sure I'm sure there's a reason. I'm sure I don't. It's my perspective that's off. And then there's a way that is like I'm judging God. Yeah. Right. Like an accusation. Yes. Mm-hmm. Rather like, than a question. Like you can't be good yeah. if you ordered your people to do this. Yeah. That's that's going to war with God. And so when we start declaring what he can or can't be, it's like we're judging him. Mm-hmm. And that's a different thing than I think an honest, hey, these passages are really confusing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can we talk about it? That's a really different, I think, I'm just thinking about like, Jackie, your book and holy, like this is God Mm -hmm. we're talking about. So we've got to, I mean, there's a level of respect in some sense. We can question, but it is good to remember he is going to be right Mm -hmm. in the way he does things. I think a lot of times um, we've turned around you know, what was the old sermon? Um, sinners in the hands of an angry God. Jonathan and we've made Edwards. it God in the hands of an angry sinner. Mm-hmm. You know, like we've turned in our cultural moment, like questioning God in an accusatory way, yeah. which I think it's good to to work on that if, if that's how we're coming at God. He can take it. I'm yeah. not saying that. And we should, with our friends, walk through them with that. But it's not a good sign of what's going on in our heart. Because yeah. well, even in the psalmist, when he questions, yeah. it's like, this is what I know your character to be. Yeah. This seems not to be going along with your character. Tell me. Yeah. Not like, you're unrighteous. You're doing the wrong thing. Get it together, God. That's yeah. right. Like, that's not the tone of the psalmist. That's right. No matter how much he wrestles. And he wrestles a lot. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Well, how do we tell the difference? Um, It's almost easier. What we've talked about so far is somebody maybe who just says, I have doubts. I don't believe anymore. And they walk away completely. I think what we also see culturally today is a lot of people are like, Jesus and I, we are good, but I'm going to live however I want. And Jesus is okay with that. We've talked about it. Yeah, he's fine with me. I'm fine with him. But I don't have to live by the Bible. Yeah, that's rough. <laughs> those are those are probably harder. Mm-hmm. You I think know? they're much harder because it's it's easier to to discuss, you know, reality with someone who says, "No, I I, I do believe that God has a law. I'm just not going to live according to it." Mm-hmm. Cool, like <laughs> we we going somewhere. Yeah. Versus the person that says. No, like, you know, licentiousness, that's not a problem. Yeah, like, yeah. God loves me. Yep. Um, but I think we just have to go back to the text. Yeah. We have to go back to the book and say, what, what is the evidence that God is okay with that? Yeah. You know, what, yeah. what, is, what is the evidence that morality does not matter mm-hmm. f- when it comes to those who say that they know Jesus? Like, Anyone who has been born of God will not continue in sin. The whole book mm. of First John really mm. kind of kills that entire argument because he's consistently saying, no, if you follow God, if you walk after him, you will be like him. Yep. You know? So what do you do with that person? It's a different conversation. Yeah, it, it is. is. It's a different conversation because it's like, okay, but well, you're saying that you believe. Yeah. But the scriptures say this. So what you what you want from God isn't lining up with what God's asking of you. Mm-hmm. So what are you going to do? Yeah, that's right. And, and I was just talking to Jasmine about this. I, I think what makes this difficult is when you're the only person challenging. This is, you know, I think that's the burden of the church. Yeah. Is when you have more than one voice saying, look at the text, look at God, look yeah. at his law, look at his righteousness, follow after him, be empowered by the spirit so you can walk in, by his spirit. Mm-hmm. Like if it's just me, you could probably argue that away. 
Yep. But when it's in the context of church, where church discipline is a thing and all the stuff, then I think you have more voices by which you have to see, huh, maybe I am being deceived and right. how I think the Christian faith should be lived out. Yeah. But usually when a person has gotten to that place, they're also separated from community. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's like, I yeah 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 there's a proverb it says he who isolates himself sets himself against all good desire or something like that you know it's like that you almost see it start to happen before it happens the slow isolation of a person like they just stop coming to small group Mm -hmm. then they stop coming to church and there's always a reason you know but there's this slow isolation and so then you're like the last lifeboat left in their life and I do think one of the ways is just to keep saying, hey, you need to be in, come to church, you know, because maybe it will be the preacher's word that Sunday mm-hmm. that gets to them because the word's mm-hmm. going to speak. Yeah, you know, the spirit is going to move through, hopefully, through the word being taught or mm-hmm. even I mean, I have a lot of people I just say, hey, just come come to Bible study. Mm-hmm. Just keep coming. Don't stop coming. You know, I think the more we can invite them in hopefully make them feel welcome maybe the word will speak yeah. at some point even mm-hmm. if our art yeah because sometimes the front on front confronting mm-hmm. hey you're living with your boyfriend yeah you're doing all these things that don't seem in line with the scriptures just makes them feel like well now i can't come they're all judging right, me right yeah I, and it's not like there's not a place for that at some point but i do think the more we can keep saying come Come, you know, and trust the spirit to. And I, I think we we have to take our cues from Jesus hmm. and how often he prayed for yeah. the disciples yeah. and prays for us. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like yeah. he is constantly interceding. Even Moses. Israel was a very stiff necked people. <laughs> yes. And he was always going yeah. to God about them. Yeah. As soon as they like, as soon as God told him, hey, they're downstairs or down, uh, down the mountain making the calf, he intercedes for the people, you know, and it's like, I think we are so pragmatic and practical that we start to find the TGC blogs and how do I do this? How do I do that? Mm -hmm. And that's helpful. But we neglect to pray to the God who is the only one that can change a hard heart. He literally is the only one that can do it. And, and so I, I think having a, a posture and a, and a disposition of prayer that says, God, I'm going to do what I can do, but I know ultimately you can, only you can water this thing. Yes. Yeah. I think that's huge. Taking the responsibility yeah. off of your own shoulders yeah. because I can't keep anybody in the faith. Nope. I can't even keep myself in the faith. Hello? That's the Holy Spirit doing that. that yeah. does, does to not, him who was able. Me. Right. Exactly. To keep me from stumbling. Yes. And to present me faultless and blameless. So how am I going to be <laughs> trying to keep? Susie and Bob and Cameron in the faith. Uh-huh. That's right. I can't even keep Jasmine in the faith. <laughs> That's right. So really, there is so much of so much prayer that needs to take place, and so much humility on our parts that needs to take place. That we don't have to have the magic thing yeah. to say. We just have to be faithful, and we have to pray. We have to call to repentance as Abel. Um, sinners in the ha- hands of an angry God. You mentioned that mm-hmm. a few minutes ago. And I was like, this is a perfect example of how not to talk to somebody who's fallen away. <laughs> um, in this, in the sense that so many times when people fall away, we make it more about us than it is about them. Mm. So people fall away. And instead of grieving mm. and praying and pursuing, we're like, Oh, somebody fell away. Now it's my Christian job to, be really obnoxious and rebuke them and let them know that they're going to hell. Yeah. Mm. And yeah, I don't know how they're going to take that. I don't care. Pat myself on the back and I move on from that. Um, But I think how much more powerful it would be instead to maintain a place in that person's life and to be available. So I have so many people for whom I am just available. Yeah. They know what I think. They know what my convictions are. Um, but I'm here. Yeah. Whenever, whenever you're ready to talk, whenever you need, I'm here. Yeah. And I think too that prayer for ask for the Lord to send out workers to the harvest. Yeah. Sometimes what I love seeing happen, and this is with one of our friends who walked away and he's still walking away, but, um, we were just praying for him, praying for him, praying for him. And we found out another Christian had got met him. And was asking him some questions. And, you know, it was just evident God was still putting people mm-hmm. in his life. Mm-hmm. You know, even when he didn't want to be talking to us, God was putting people 
there and so i think it might be on their plane trip Mm -hmm. it might be in the grocery store you know sometimes i think it's great just to pray will you please put like they will you chase after them with your people and i know your kingdom's big and just make them uncomfortable yeah yeah i pray that all the time for my kids (laughs) what are y'all thoughts on this um People ultimately fall away because of unbelief, mm-hmm. right? That they have, they, they just don't trust God, his worth and his word. But uh, I think we have to acknowledge how much suffering hmm. and church hurt is a big part of why people <laughs> stop believing God and the scriptures. So how do we also wrestle with the reality of why people choose to disassociate themselves from the Christian church when the Christian church at times hasn't been that Christian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I I think there's a real reality that certain people will have to answer for. Just like we say, um, I know that God saved you, but it was Jackie who shared the gospel with me. And that's why I'm a Christian. You know what I'm saying? Like there's, there was a, agent Mm -hmm. who spoke the gospel to me and i'm so thankful for you know the people we all had people in our lives who taught us the way i think there are some people who will be held responsible for turning people away for the faith because of their actions so we know their unbelief is their own hard heart at some level but you could be the human agent Mm -hmm. but that drives them further into unbelief and woe to us to be that person um, but there, there's the reality we were talking about it earlier, you know, if you teach one of these little ones to sin, mm-hmm. it would be better that a millstone would be tied around your neck and you cast into the ocean. So there are people teaching mm-hmm. wrong things to people. And one, we don't want to be those people, but I, I think there will be an accounting for people who have in, with church hurt and things. And I want to say, I understand it. I think we've all walked through yeah. deep, deep church hurt Mm -hmm. that you can understand i can understand why going to church can feel like the biggest act of faith just to walk in Mm. the doors on a sunday morning because of the hurt you've experienced there and i mean i I think we'd all say we understand it Mm -hmm. but yet we all say believe in jesus more than you believe in the church meaning like he's the perfect one he there are situations that happen that are really painful um but it is faith it is a step of faith to keep walking into the church and believing this is the place god has ordained for me to grow and so i want to be there i want to grow there and yeah i think that's what we've all chosen after hard situations yeah but i i just want to say to people who have had that i do understand Mm -hmm. i mean it's when it's a spiritual leader who has hurt you and deep ways it can be hard to trust again yeah absolutely yeah that's human Mm -hmm. and that acknowledgement is important i think not like being like what hypocrisy in the church i don't know what you're talking about (laughs) like that's not going to be helpful to anybody so i think being honest about yeah i see that i see that hurt i see the thing that you see you're not crazy Mm -hmm. um i've also i've experienced that thing that you've experienced you're not alone um goes a long way yeah and something redemptive about that <laughs> yes absolutely Be- because i think again our ten- our tendency is to teach rather than to just be present mm-hmm. right and so so there's some situations where a person is wrestling and it's wiser to just sit there and say i'm sorry i'm sorry yeah we don't even gotta go to romans yeah. <laughs> we don't gotta go to ephesians yet yeah it's simply i'm weeping with those Yep. who we mm-hmm. and in that moment i am being like jesus yeah. to that person and helping them see um his grace and his kindness and compassion yeah. in a moment when they need it most like yeah. jesus with lazarus when he died yeah he wasn't like now i'm gonna preach a sermon about how death is temporary mm. and lazarus is going to heaven and this in this kingdom is temporary and i don't know why y'all crying because yeah mm. I'm about to die and in three days I'm going to raise up and it's not a big deal to me. Like, yeah. no, he entered into those yeah. feelings and those emotions mm-hmm. and hmm. I love that about him. And that's such a good example that I think we so often as believers forget to follow. Um, we act like Jesus was the stoic, like always 
I don't know, just like he never acknowledged pain or hurt or sadness Mm -hmm. when he really did. He was a man of sorrow. Yeah. And I think that's why, and we've talked about this before, he was so bothered by the leaders of Israel because he knows that how the leaders act they're supposed to shepherd the people. And you know what you see in Ezekiel? He's so angry. God is so upset. You have not taken care of my sheep. Mm -hmm. You have fattened yourselves on them rather than bind up their wounds and heal their hurts. And he says, so guess what? I'm going to come and I'm going to be the good shepherd and I'm going to care for the sheep. And so I think hopefully we can keep pointing people to Jesus um, even when the shepherds of the church of Christ haven't done what they have should have done that the over the over shepherd Jesus mm-hmm. is the he's the king he's the prophet he's the pe- priest we're looking for yeah. in him um, but I think it's hard because I think we lose sight of Jesus sometimes you know in these conversations with people and mm-hmm. it becomes well, how's your doctrine or how's your life or whatever? And we say, yeah. instead of continually inviting them, you can still come back. Mm-hmm. You can still come back. It's mm-hmm. okay. I, if Yeah. We want you back. Yeah. And not in an empty way, not in like a, you know, I'm checking, I'm checking my boxes kind of way. Like if your friend is on Twitter, Instagram, wherever, and it's like, I'm, I've walked away from the faith. Then mm-hmm. it's like, I know I haven't talked to you in six months and I haven't checked on you in the hardship that you've been going through mm-hmm. that, helped lead to this place but um you're going to hell <laughs> and that's that's that, all I have that to does exist that. though it does. i've seen it it really I've does i've seen it and it's like where were you when i was suffering like yeah. where were you before it got to this point yeah. yeah yeah how have your friendships changed when someone walks away oh they changed a lot yeah. um i've i've, I've in my experience, I saw the change before the the apostate message was confessed, if if that mm-hmm. makes sense. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, just not really texting me back mm-hmm. or not coming around, mm-hmm. not liking pictures on Instagram. Like, there's just a, a shift. Yeah. Um, and it's hurtful, to be honest, it because is. it's like... I love you, you know, and these are most likely people that you spent time with and shared deep things with at times or meals and just all the things. And so for it to change. But I also understand uh, because I I actually reached out to a friend last week and shared how uh, I understand that there had to be a change in our relationship. And what I said was, I can see how it can feel uncomfortable to be around mm. somebody like me who has a different worldview than yeah. you. Yeah. I can see how that just doesn't, right. that doesn't match the, the mode that you're on. Yeah. I was like, but even then, I love you still. Yeah. You know? And so I'm acknowledging, I get it. Yeah. Like, I, I can't, I'm going to take it personal, but I'm not going to take it personal. Yep. Because if I was... If I was distant from God, I wouldn't want to be around Christians either. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Why would I? Yeah. You're reminding me and making my conscience flare up. And, and that's uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. have someone okay. in my life. Oh, sorry. No. I have someone in my life who is uh, no longer a believer, grew up in the church, um, and is just no longer there. And he is very hostile towards Christians and Christianity. Mm. But because of God's grace and my ability to remain present in his life, he's like, I really don't like Christians, but I like you. Cause I know you mean what you say. Hmm. And I'm really not into like, I don't really do God, but I like you because what you believe about God makes you act a certain way that hmm. I, that I see that I observe. It's a scary thing to have somebody who doesn't believe in your life because they're watching you. Yeah. And they're noticing you and they're clocking you. Sometimes it makes them uncomfortable and they stop coming around you. Um, sometimes they're like nitpicking and looking for hypocrisy. Sometimes they're, so even just staying in proximity to, a, to someone who um, no longer believes is in itself a testimony. Yeah, that's right. And I think sometimes you're hoping I'll be that friend they can turn to when they do find themselves 
perhaps alone and the world's not working for them anymore. I mean, I hope to leave that door open. Um, but I, Jackie, one thing that you were saying, um, one of my friends, multiple friends told me this before your kids go off to college, they leave before they leave. Mm -hmm. Like they start getting so busy with like they can drive and they're out of your house more than they're in your house. Mm -hmm. And so by the time they go to college, you're almost prepared. Mm -hmm. And I feel that with people who fall away. It's like they have left before they left. They start withdrawing from certain things and just slowly. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what, what I want to do when I see it early on, not, not to do it in an accusatory way, but to be in a, Hey, I miss you. Is everything okay? I want to spot it early on Mm -hmm. and try to reach out to the person Mm -hmm. and say, is everything okay? Are you going through anything? Do you, do you want to talk about anything? But, um, it's hard. It's very hard. Yeah. It's very hard because, you know, but I think to a certain degree, I'm great, not grateful that it's hard, but I appreciate that it's hard because it means I care. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Because if it's not hard, then it's like, man, maybe I haven't in, in really emotionally invested mm-hmm. into this person and mm-hmm. this relationship. And so there is an apathy mm-hmm. towards them choosing the world over God. And so I think the the grief actually is a is a is a sign that there is a level of love and care and compassion that should then move me to continue to pursue them. Uh, not like in a super aggressive way, but just say be available, but also again to keep praying and giving them over to the Lord. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that's the hidden work to, I feel, I mean, and again, this is that conviction of even having these conversations. Cause I'm like, yeah, I might, I might talk about it with y'all and have a conversation. Yeah. I'm so concerned about this person, blah, 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 blah. But am I on my knees praying? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And like, am I doing the really hard work, which is being before the Lord and saying, will you please save mm-hmm. this person? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, will you please bring them to yourself? Mm-hmm. Will you please renew their desire for you and draw them back? And I think that's what we can. It's really the only. That's the only thing. It's the only mm-hmm. tool in our toolbox yeah. in some sense. Well, I mean, is there a way? To deconstruct your faith that is healthy. Yes. Mm. That's a good question. Okay. What does that look like then? Um, I've been through that. Mm -hmm. Totally. Uh, Re-examining things that you once believed and once held dear that weren't scriptural, but that you were either taught were scriptural or had just kind of imbibed that were scriptural. Um, It's really scary But there are people like me who do that and still end up as believers. Mm -hmm. So what anchored you? The word of God. Okay. Because for me, the things that I was deconstructing from, I couldn't find in his word when I looked at it. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was lots of ideas about womanhood, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Ideas about um, my ethnicity. Ideas about... Um, how the home is supposed to be run, you know, mm-hmm. homeschooling, where, you know, mm-hmm. you know the conservative, you know the world. Um, <laughs> and when I actually looked at the Bible, mm-hmm. I saw, you know, God didn't, God didn't make this stuff that's been mm-hmm. hurting me, that's been mm-hmm. like tugging and pulling. And this is actually extra biblical. Mm-hmm. And it made me more committed to the truth of the gospel than I had been before because I was understanding that the things that I had associated with being Christian, some of them weren't. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like maturity. Mm-hmm. I am pretty mature. So yeah, I think sense. so. Sounds you got right. your legs crossed. Sounds right. Sounds That's right. pretty adult of you. Are you impressed with me crossing my legs right now? I'm I, surprised, actually. I can't believe I and did it. And you're breathing. I'm, I, I know. know. How long is it going to last? I don't know, because I'm feeling kind of tight. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> she might. But yeah, when I, when I cross de- that. De- de- deconstruct your knees. Yeah, when I crossed that leg over, I was like, okay, yo, she still got it. <laughs> she still got it. Would you say that, have you ever been through a season like that, Melissa? Yeah, I would. I would actually say. It's in some of the same realms, you know, of what does cultural Christianity say um, 
manhood and womanhood should look like versus what does the Bible say? So for me, it wasn't a um, going away from Christianity. I feel like it was going deeper into what the word actually says. In. So, you know, starting to look, I'm really thankful for what I used to think were the add-ons of scripture, like um, Romans 16, when Paul is saying goodbye to everybody, and all of a sudden you realize half of them are women who are his fellow workers in the Lord. Yeah, and yeah, so some of it was starting to see scripture, mm. all the parts matter, mm-hmm. and how, you know, women have been a part of this grand redemptive story all along. Mm. And he's using men and women. It's not that men are bad. It's not that, you know, that both together, you know, are called and are part of the body. Mm. And the more I see that, I think it's just, I would say it's refined my faith and refined maybe wrong views I'd heard from other people and whether it was just somebody who was repeating somebody's view and it wasn't repeated very well. Right. Um, but just what's cultural. And what I would also say is maybe 1950s American culture right. um, versus what is biblical. And, and not to say that deconstruction always leads you to the Bible saying what you want it to say mm. either. Cause like, you know, yeah, June Cleaver's not the Proverbs 31 woman. Good for me. That's mm-hmm. great. Mm-hmm. God still has laws about sexuality. Yeah. And well, and that Proverbs 31 about... woman is rising early. Yeah. You yeah, know yeah, I mean, like, she she's is. not living an easy life. Mm-hmm. You know, in some ways, mm-hmm. like, I look at her and I'm like, oh, this is hard. I don't like the color purple. She got them servants, though. <laughs> yeah, she does. I know. Yeah, I want to be a Proverbs 31 woman. Well. I, want some, I want some servants. Okay. That's what my mentor used to always say. She was like, well, when I get my servant girls, I'll make sure they're well fed. <laughs> I will. That's the least I could do. But I think what both of you just said uh, might actually lift some anxiety for people. Because I think it, what you highlighted is that, like, even if someone uses the late the, the, the language of deconstruction, mm-hmm. it doesn't necessarily mm-hmm. mean that they're leaving the faith. Yes. Right. It might mean that they're just thinking it over yes. and going deeper into yep. many of the yeah. things that they thought they believed but mm-hmm. didn't really. And I don't know. You get what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. there's there's very little about the gospel. I feel I feel like I've only gone deeper in. Yeah. I only believe more in how my works cannot save me mm-hmm. and how much Jesus has rescued my soul. Like it's a deeper in and it's a more joyful in mm-hmm. through the years. So I think the the concern is is the people who just you we know what it looks like. I mean, they walk away versus oh hey, what I think about God in this area has shifted. I think that's very different, yeah. you know, from... And here's the scripture that I have yes. to back up the thing that I think about God that is different from what I thought before. That's you right. Know, it's not that's just like right. he told me or I felt like, and now I feel better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like I grew up in this kind of church and now I'm at a Baptist church and mm-hmm. I got baptized as... You know, or mm-hmm. Those type of changes, I think, are part of maturing into what maybe leaving your parents' faith mm-hmm. and gaining your own faith. And That's I good. think most kids who grew up in a Christian home have to go through that at some level. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I hope as parents, we can actually encourage them in that mm-hmm. rather than say, hold on, you're not going to be my type of Christian. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think there's any fear in that. I'm Chad just glad. That. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm I just do. glad, you know, my daughter, she got baptized as an adult last year at college. You know, she was baptized as an infant because I'm I was in the Presbyterian Church. I didn't look at that and be like, "Oh dear." Yeah, I was like, "Well, I mean, what most college students are doing, I think getting baptized is a pretty good option." <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> so I was pretty happy. Yeah, I just want to support her and say, "Hey, follow Jesus. Mm-hmm. If these are your convictions, mm-hmm. that's great." Yeah. You know, but I, I don't know. I, I don't think we have to be afraid of that. Yeah that type of deconstruction yeah. or changing of their, of what they might believe. Yeah. Amen to that. Um, today, our question for favorite things is what is your favorite format of a book? We all love to read. Jasmine is the audible queen. Yeah. 2021 oh, really? has been the year of the audiobook for me. Do you know, I've never listened to an audio book ever. Um, a lot of people say that it's not reading, so okay, it's Doesn't good. Feel like it's good it's that reading. you are uh, not part of that. I'm definitely a book person. I'd rather have a paper book normal, paperback normally, but I need a physical book in front of me. Yeah. I'm 
so old school. I'm terrible. I can do a Kindle, but I never like it. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't, I really am a visual person. So I like remembering where the quote was on the page. You know, I I like seeing Mm it. I see it mentally. Yeah, I I was a physical book person for a long time, uh, but I've become an iBooks person. Really? Only because it's more convenient. Yeah. Like I always, always have access to it and other books because I'm always reading five or six and at the same time. you can search stuff too. Yeah. You can. I on, love that. With iBooks, is that on your computer? That's on my phone. Well, it is on your computer, okay. but I, I use it on my phone. So it's like I could just, I could be at the airplane, I mean at the airport and it's like I don't have to say, oh, I yeah. forgot the book. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. like it's there. But what I will do is if I'm finished with it and I liked it, I'll buy the physical to put it in my library okay and then you can search it so like if i'm trying to find that quote Mm -hmm. you know where so-and-so said Mm -hmm. something like the word deconstruct all i can find it Mm -hmm. yep we're really excited that this season crossway has sponsored let's talk and um it's fun for us to get to share great resources that are out there and i know one thing that women are always looking for um are good bible studies and so we're excited to share about these flourish bible studies by lydia brownback and she has one on Esther, one on Luke, one on First and Second Peter, and, and we don't have here, but also Judges and Philippians. Ooh, so two more mm-hmm. coming. Yep. So tell us a little more about them, Jasmine. So they're ten week studies, and they are the kind where you can like write in the book, you know, read all the stuff in the book. There's maps, there's timelines. Yeah. I got very excited about the yes. timelines. <laughs> I like the maps. Yeah. The maps. Yeah. Nice. That's really great. Jackie is very impressed. I love it. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And it's also like a pretty cool collection of books that she did, like Esther and Judges. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm into it. I'm into it. I packed the Esther one um, to look at on my way here, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's like just the right amount of homework. Yeah. You can do it. I think I said it's 10 weeks. Yeah. You can do it by yourself or you can do it with a group. Yep. And it's really manageable. Yeah. And... Jackie knows where you can get them. I do. So I'm not one to hustle off no Bible studies. Well, okay. Like, yeah, that just seems a little uh, bad. Uh, so just go on ahead, go to crossway.org forward slash plus, and you might just find out how to get 30% off because, you know, the saints love a good deal. Okay. <laughs> that's all for this episode of Let's Talk. We'll be back next week. So tune in. Bye, saints. <laughs>